Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Good morning and welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Erin Weisbro, and I am so excited to be your host this morning. We have a great word in store for you today. I'm so excited. However, we just have a couple quick announcements. So remember that you can join us live during the weekdays. Those times are Monday and Friday at 10 a.m., Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m., and bright and early Wednesday mornings at 7 a.m. And then if you're joining us live, we encourage you to interact with us by asking questions. You can post your questions in the comment section below on whatever platform you're watching today. And then stay tuned for the end of the broadcast and we're gonna get to as many of those questions as we possibly can. We would also like to take this time to thank all of the friends and the partners of Andrew Walmack Ministries and Karis Bible College. Thank you so much. We could not do all the things that we're doing here at the ministry without you. God bless you. And if this ministry has been a blessing to you and you would like to donate, give, or become a partner, you can do so anytime by visiting our website at awmi.net slash give or you can call our helpline 24-7 at 719-635-1111. And when you call our helpline, remember that we have awesome phone ministers standing by 24-7. They love God, they love the Word of God, and they know how to pray in agreement with the Word and will of God for your life. And I wanna encourage you today that you don't need to do life alone. There is an entire body of Christ here who loves you and wants to be agreed with you. You can also call and share any praise reports of the good things that God's doing in your life. So again, that helpline number is 719-635-1111. Call, we would love to hear from you today. Now it is my joy and privilege to introduce you to our speaker today, Mrs. Carrie Pickett. Hi, Hello. Carrie. Hello, nice Hello. to see you again. It's been a long time since I've actually done a live Bible study. Well, we're excited to have you today. Thank you. Blessed to be your host. And then also, <laughs> Miss Carrie and her husband, Mike, are such a blessing at the ministry. Carrie is the vice president of Andrew Walmack Ministries and Karis Bible College International mm -hmm. Operations and yeah. the director of Karis Bible College. So yes. she has got a great word in store for you today. Well, I'm really excited to see all of you. It is such a, a pleasure to be back. I know we've done some reruns since I've been able to minister you uh, on other uh, platforms and stuff mm -hmm. and, and um, led Bible study with Andrew, but uh, it's been a, a wonderfully busy season. Can you believe <laughs> it's already this far into the new year? And so we're really excited to um, be able to share with you. So I have some great things for you. These are some things that I have been sharing and teaching recently, so they're really, um, it's just a really exciting word that I have on my heart. And so um, this is actually the 100th day. Uh, this is the 100th episode of my program, Life Foundations. And so that's what I've been busy with. So I hope you guys have been able to check that out. But this is actually some of the material that I had just finished. I, I did a whole season on God's true nature. And I just love, love, love this um, season um, of teaching because what we did is we really talked about who the nature of God Okay. and how every part of God's nature, you see the promises of the word come from that. Mm -hmm. And so this is what's so powerful that every single attribute of God, every single name of God, and you guys have heard me talk about this before as I specifically, like I'll use like with Jehovah Rapha, you know, I'll use, you know, the dynamic of who he is and that not only is it who he is and why it's important to know who he is, the reason why it's so important is because of who he is inside of you and I, right? How he lives inside. So that means that the person, not just healing, but the person of healing lives with us, in us. And so if that's the person of healing, then everything that that person does is about healing. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about all these attributes of God, we talk about all the characteristics of God, the fullness of the Godhead bodily lives inside of you and I. That's just, I get, I get really, really excited about that. So this is gonna be just a clip, just a short um, introduction 
of just some of that material, but um, I want to talk about God's provision and God's provision will be seen. And so when you look at Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God our provider, this is one of the attributes of God. This is one of the ways that God calls himself, right? And when we talk about spiritual body, and I know this is such a huge foundational teaching for Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College, is when we talk about spirit, soul, and body is that the fullness of God himself came to live inside of you. So now you are now made complete in Christ. And so the, the, the fullness of the kingdom and the fullness of his promises now belong to you and I. But this is what happens is we can hear that message and be like, okay, that's great, but I don't see it. I don't see it in my life. Like where is the provision and where is the healing? Where are all these attributes of God himself lives within me? Then how do I release that into my everyday life? And so that's an excellent question that you ask. And so when we talk about how do we release this attribute and the fullness of who God is with inside of us? This is what is so important when, when, when we come together to study the Word of God, right? And so this is why I love that you are so dedicated to putting the Word of God in, whether you're watching live or you're watching by archives. What you're doing is you're putting a priority on the Word of God. And that's how we start to release who we are in the Spirit. That's how we start to truly walk as children of God. That's how we start to walk in the position, not only of who we are in Christ, but who God is within us. See, there's a position of God within us that now we get to walk out, right? Now you and I get to be this reflection of God Almighty. Amen. That is so powerful. Yeah. And so when we when we do this, when we're in the Word, when we're studying and we're getting in the Word together, when you're sitting in your questions and we're doing Q&A with all the different teachers here at Cares, what are we doing? We are saying, you know what? I believe that I received something in salvation, but now I'm continuing to transform and have this dedication and discipline to transform my mind to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. and so this is what's so powerful. So we're going to talk about the provision because... As, I, as I've seen, um, Mike and I have been doing a whole bunch of traveling with our kids recently, um, this dynamic of provision, I'm seeing it as we, we meet with other believers that they're, they're either struggling with provision or they're struggling with healing. And this is something that, you know, when we talk about the Word of God, you can look at your body and let it tell you what's your reality. Or you can look at the economy, you can look at your situations, you can look at your finances and let that be your reality. Or what we do is we choose to take our eyes off the things of the flesh, off our emotions and onto the Word of God. And so I want to declare some promises over you today just to encourage you. Mm -hmm. That not only is, and, and I love this, Jehovah Jireh, and so the one of the definitions obviously of Jehovah Jireh is the Lord God our provider. And that's what most people know when we talk about Jehovah Jireh. But also, <clears throat> another definition of Jehovah Jireh uh, is the Lord's provision will be seen. Amen. Mm. I love that because that's, it's not, it's like, he's our provider and it's kind of like, well, I wonder where he is. And it's like, no, I love this definition because Jehovah's provision will be seen. So this is this whole dynamic of you having this confidence in the character and nature of God. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's going to be seen. <clears throat> And I believe sometimes you, we're praying and we're praying for the Lord, please, Lord, please, versus we start declaring the promises of God. Now, remember, everything, every name, every description that God calls himself, that is the very attribute and nature of himself. So therefore, when we see promises about provision, those aren't just these random promises. They're coming from that very attribute of who he is. And he's not ever going to give a promise that doesn't come to pass. You know why? Because if the promise doesn't come to pass, then he himself is unable to do it. Why? Because he calls himself that very thing. See, that's why the enemy is always trying to bring doubt and unbelief when we're trying to hold on to a promise. Like we're confessing it and we're like, but I, I hope it works. And then like, oh, I don't know. Is it going to work? And then we struggle with this doubt and unbelief and we just see our faith just falling short. Why? Because we're trying to think, well, have I done enough in this promise? Mm. It's not about how you've confessed it, what you've done in the promise. We need to believe it, obviously. But the the faith is in that the the promise works because that's who he is. Mm -hmm. Not what I've got to be for God to do that. It's what he is towards me and you. 
That's powerful. That's a completely yeah. different way of looking at provision and healing and all these attributes and promises of God because religion will tell you if you want God to heal you and if you want God to provide, you better read enough, serve enough, pray enough, abstain enough, whatever it is to do enough so that God looks at you and says, today. Yes, today. I grant you your wish today. Today, the promise works for you today. No, that's not how it works. We go to this word. We go to the promises of God. Why? Because God, I know who you are. And if you've declared this, my trust and faith is in you. Yeah. And that's why when I speak the word of God, when you and I speak the promise of God, now it has authority because we know exactly where that promise came from. It came from him. It came from our father. It came from the provision, it came from the healer, it came right from our banner, it came from righteousness. So all of these scriptures. So one of the things that we used to do when I was in uh, Russia and I was teaching uh, God's true nature and I was teaching promises of God, one of the assignments that I would always give to the students is I would give them this long list of all the names of God and then I would tell them, okay, so here's the thing. You need to now get into the word and I need you to find three to five promises for every single name of God. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome. They came back and they're like, oh my gosh, do you know how many promises there are about provision? Do you know how many mm -hmm. promises there are about healing? I'm like, yes, because he is making promises out of the overflow of who he is to you and I. That's why the word of God is inspired by God. It came from himself. Mm. Amen. Amen. That's, that's good. a really good principle. Okay. So let me just, I'm going to take you through some scriptures um, because we don't just talk about the word. We get into the word, right? So in Genesis chapter 22, verse 14, this is where, um, this is where Abram uh, had made a sacrifice, right? He was going to sacrifice uh, his son and God uh, provided for uh, a sacrifice. So he didn't have to kill Isaac. And he says, so the Lord, so excuse me. So Abraham called the name of that place. The Lord will provide. Mm -hmm. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Mm -hmm. And so we see this obedience that Abraham, right? He's, he was told to kill his only son. And so he's like, okay. So he takes Isaac and he has the, he has the wood and they go up and he asks, he says, Father, you know, where's the sacrifice? And I, now sacrifice was a, uh, a process. It was something that was a routine. It was, it was something habitual that they, as the children of God did. And so he was like, you know what, let's just, let's, let's go. And he laid Isaac on the altar, mm -hmm. knowing that even if he were to kill Isaac, God would raise him mm -hmm. because he'd also had all the promises through Isaac, right? And he was going to be the father of many generations. And so right at that moment, then there, he looks over and there, he hears this rustling and there is this ox that's caught in the thicket. And that's when he said, okay, this place is going to be called the Lord will provide. And that was the first time we hear this, the first time God is called Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, the provider. And so I want to, I want to now talk about, so this is the name of God. Can I give you some promises today? Mm -hmm. Because I believe not only is there a financial provision that God's wanting you to see, right? God's mm -hmm. provision will be seen. But I believe, there, I believe there's provision. There's this abundance, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at provision, we think of having enough and more than enough. So uh, what I love about the word of God, God doesn't just want us to have enough. He wants us to what? Give and it shall be given, right? He wants us to, and he, he gives all kinds of commands as far as, you know, the, the homeless and the widow and the orphan. And there's this abundance of, of God's provision that doesn't just be me, my, and my four, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's this aspect of their, God's provision is so big that it wants to flow out of us, right? So that, that truly as believers, we're showing the character and nature of God. See, God doesn't just want to provide for us out of his nature, overflow provision to your life, but he wants you to have such an interaction with who he is as the provider within your life, that there's an abundance of his provision out of your life. Just like out of him, it comes out of you because you and I are supposed to now reflect Christ. That's why us giving is not like, oh, this is Christian duty. No, man, this is the nature of mm -hmm. God having the ability and opportunity to flow out of you and I. Mm -hmm. That should change how you and I 
see giving, how we see offerings, how we see tithing, how we see, you know, benevolence, how we see, you know, coming alongside brothers and sisters and, and even perfect strangers. We start to see it differently. Why? Because I have the nature of God. So not only does he, as my provider, provide for my needs, but now as a provider, what is he doing? He is flowing out. He is representing his nature and character out of our lives. That's good. It is a really powerful. Okay, so I'm going to give you some scriptures. So in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, it says this, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Is it he's going to supply every need of yours according to what? Your good works and your labor and, right. and your tithing? No, he provides it according to his riches in glory mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. So out of who Christ is, out of that glory, out of that majesty of Jesus comes all of his riches. And it's from his riches that God supplies, right? And so I'm trying to tie this aspect of God's nature and the promises of God. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at this next one. In Matthew, and we've heard this before, Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, it says, If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. And when he talks about who are evil, right, um, Jesus was talking also, he was talking to the people at, at that time, right? And he was talking to all the people around them. He was talking to the Sadducees and Pharisees. He says, If you then, who are evil, especially compared to God, oh my gosh, he says, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Will your Father who is heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So he said, in the same way, that position as a father and then the abundance and those good gifts coming from a father, he's equating also this aspect of our Father in heaven and his nature and his character, right, mm -hmm. knows how to give good gifts. I'll tell you right now, there are good gifts that God has prepared for you. And not just in your bank account. I believe it's all kinds of blessings. Blessings because if you will let God love you, God wants to love you in all the important ways. Mm -hmm. And then in all the little ways, things that you don't even think are important. Like, oh, well, that's not important. I mean, you know, I, I you know, it, it, a car, whatever, it, you know, car is fine, God, whichever, just as long as it gets me to work. Mm -hmm. But God gives you the car to really bless you, right? And you're like, wow, this is I, this is what I always wanted. Thank you, Lord. God's provision is not only does he want to provide and just, you know, cross off a checkbox to you. In his provision, he wants to reveal his love. That's good. He wants to show his goodness. And sometimes people are afraid to ask God not only for the gifts, but for the good gifts. Mm -hmm. And can I encourage you today God loves you so much. He wants to reveal the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus in your life because it's part of your testimony. And people will say, well, how is me paying my bills part of my testimony? Mm. Because it's not just about paying your bills. But again, we said it's more of the abundance, every need, right? But also seed that you're able to sow right into the kingdom into people into opportunities into right needs and to see that be a reflection of the glory of God that's what's so powerful about finances is that it's not only us getting to experience God it's getting us to reflect God right and in reflecting God we get to present the glory of his riches that's this is for some people you know honestly provision is a hard a hard how should I say this? It's hard for them to let God love them in the area of provision. Mm -hmm. The reason is, is that it's easy to trust in ourselves for provision. It's easier to work the second job. It's easier to, you know, live off ramen noodles. It's easier to, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I did in Bible school, by the way, I lived off ramen noodles. So I didn't quite have the revelation of, of, of faith and provision. Yeah. Luckily, I love ramen noodles, so it worked out great. So, even I still love ramen noodles, but this whole dynamic <laughs> because they're like, "You want ramen for lunch? Yay! Let's all eat ramen." So, but it was this dynamic of I didn't understand the provision of God. So we can we can get into this mode of us providing for ourselves, and that's why it's hard to trust God mm -hmm. and believe Him because we can do it ourselves. This is one of the things when Mike and I got married, we were you know, getting ready to go on the mission field. And um, I had been on the mission field already for like full time, seven, almost going on eight years. Oh. And so um, I was just like, woohoo, you know, I was kind of like, 
God's will, God's bill, you know, and <laughs> here I marry this incredible like provision provider and he's just like, okay, what do we need to do? And he was like trying to work all these extra hours to save all this stuff to, you know, to have all this provision to, you know, fill the bank account so that we yes. could live, you know, with this poor missionary mentality because, you know, we're not going to be able to work kind of thing. And I was just like, God is going to provide. And so that was one of those mm. things that, you know, our revelations and where we were, we were able to, you know, come alongside each other and encourage and build each other up because I, I did, I had that revelation of, you know, God's provision, praise God, after I got out of Bible school and stopped living off ramen noodles, I had realized, man, I have to go to another level with this yeah. thing because I'm getting ready to go on the mission field. Mm -hmm. And this is all about believing by faith. Yes. And so I knew that going over, it wasn't just, you know, God, I need the provision. I need the money. I had to know him. Mm, as the provider. Right. I needed to have such a trust in him that I wasn't looking to people mm -hmm. to be my source, that I wasn't like, okay, I've got to get out that newsletter, and if I don't get out that newsletter, I'm not going to make my... It was like, yes, I'm going to steward, and I obviously was learning how to steward as a missionary, and I was learning how to share vision and invite people to be a mm -hmm. part of something that God was doing. But at the end of the day, I couldn't put my trust in people. In fact, I remember when uh, I, there was a particular missionary, a particular couple in my home church when I was a missionary. And they had given larger checks throughout kind of some of my previous missions trips and things like that. And I remember I was kind of low on finances and I was just like, oh, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, I know for sure they're gonna get like 500 to $1,000. So mm -hmm. I was just like, I was like, okay, well, they're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And God was like, excuse me? Uh-oh. Is your faith in them or is your faith in me? And I was like, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, Lord. Mm -hmm. And you know what? After that time, <laughs> that family never gave a gift. <gasps> Not one time, which oh, is totally yeah. fine, you know, but it was like one of those things I realized, man, I had put such a faith yeah. in them mm -hmm. and their, their financial prosperity and my ability to connect with them, mm -hmm. that that's how I was trying to pay rent and do wow. all that stuff while I was on the mission field and do the ministry mm -hmm. stuff. And God was like, no, you have to know me as your provider. That's mm -hmm. And that's ultimately what you and I are invited into today. We're invited into this relationship mm -hmm. with a living God so that our provision, our trust is not in our job. Our provision and trust is not in our family, our, our, our spouse, our, our employer or the economy. Wow. <clears throat> I remember when Mike was, um, you know, getting ready to go on the mission field, you know, he was a, he was a prison guard at that time in Connecticut. And he was like looking at different things, like, how am I going to do this? And the Lord asked me, he said, is your trust in the state of Connecticut or in me? And he was like, oh yeah, no, it's in you, God. It was just like, you don't put your faith in any state, yeah. <laughs> especially right now. You just know your, your trust cannot be in some structure or system of man because mm -hmm. it will always have its ups and downs. It will always have its boundaries. It will always have its limitations or things you have to do to qualify for that provision, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes those things that you have to qualify to do them aren't godly. Wow. And so this dynamic of, of understanding that God, not only does God want to give good gifts, it comes because He is the good God. He is the one. So we start to have this faith like, yeah, I believe God for good gifts because He is such a good God. So only good can come from Him. Only supernatural can come from Him. And you know what? I'll tell you at the end of the day, God loves to get the testimony. Mm -hmm. God loves the testimony. God mm -hmm. loves that joy when you and I go, oh my gosh, let me tell you what God did. Oh my gosh. He loves that moment because in that moment, what are we doing? We're also testifying to the goodness of God, to the people around us. And so they can start to look to God and say, well, God did that for you. Well, then God can do that for me. Mm -hmm. Let me jump into another yeah. verse here. It says, um, <clears throat> And I know this might not seem like a provision verse, but can I tell you, this is a really important verse about provision. <clears throat> Philippians chapter four in verse six and seven, it says, do not be anxious about anything. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you right now, many of you are anxious today, but this is do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And so this whole, then in verse seven, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So this, this especially, I, f I find that I'm seeing so many people 
in anxiousness about finances and anxiousness about the future and anxiousness about bills. And sometimes they're anxious about things that haven't even arrived yet. Well, what if? Well, what if this were to happen? And you start to get anxious about things <clears throat> that are not even on the table. And that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. Get us so to the place where our hearts are bound in fear and anxiousness and worry. But this says you can give everything to God in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to God, mm -hmm. right? You, you're able to give all these needs, all your financial needs, all your, all the bills, all the, all the deadlines. <clears throat> even maybe God's given you vision for something and you've been like, well, yeah, I'll do it. But how happen and how's God going to pay for it? And you've actually stepped away from vision and you're not in obedience because you are not sure how the finances are going to come to play. Wow. And I tell you, if God gave you the vision <clears throat> and that from his nature and character, God, the creator, right? So he's always giving you and I vision, things that you and I are supposed to step into, places we're supposed to go, things that we're supposed to do, people we're supposed to touch you know, nations that we're supposed to change, right? God always has vision out of who he is because he's the creator and he, that's who he is within you. Well, if the creator is giving you vision, then I guarantee the provider is gonna bring the provision. God doesn't give you vision without provision, but sometimes people are waiting for the provision before they ever step in obedience to the vision. Wow. And can I tell you today, man, God, God wants to invite you step into your vision, step into the obedience, step into the things that he's calling you to do because he wants to release, he wants to release his goodness so that you and I can what? With thanksgiving, mm -hmm. give all those things to God. And then it says the peace of God, which passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And I love this because then you can have this peace that guards. It's like, you know what? I wasn't expecting this bill. I did not expect that to happen to my car. And Oh my goodness, this is happening at my work. But you know what, God? My trust is in you. My peace is in you because you're the provider. So, Lord, your provision will be seen. I don't know how it's going to be, but my trust is in you. And then you start to live in this level of peace mm -hmm. with God. This is super powerful. And I believe as you, I have so many more scriptures about just the aspect of God's provision, but there's one I want to, I, I want to give you today. And it's actually something I just hadn't, I hadn't really seen. I had collected, but it's like revelation came to me new. Mm -hmm. But in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 23, it says, and he will give rain for the seed with which you sow the ground and bread, the produce of the ground, which will be rich and plenteous. In that day, your livestock will graze in large pastures. And it was interesting, I was looking at this, and it says, he will give rain for the seed with which you sow the ground. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing. We can't talk about God the provider without us, us talking about trust. And one of the ways we get to reflect trust in God is that we are givers, that we are putting seed into the ground. We are sowing, we are, you know, it's the tithes, it's the offerings, it's the giving. It's like, we understand that that money is just, it's seed. And we understand, Lord, if I can sow seed, it says God will give rain for the seed in which you sow the ground. I believe there is seed in the ground that many of you have and you're like, it can happen? Why is it happening? Like, uh, and you're frustrated and you're trying to tell God, okay, I've got the seed, so I need to return on it like now, and I want it to look this way. Mm -hmm. Can I just tell you that when God rains on your seed, when God wants to bring a return on it, when God wants to bring an abundance and provision off of that, can I tell you, it is always better than what you and I could demand or when it and how it and oh, you know, it's so much bigger. And so I just want to encourage you today that you can say, Lord, I just thank you. I've got seed in the ground. You know what I've, I've, I've seen with, even with the scripture, I was thinking about this with my children as I've been, you know, different principles. And I've just started to see some of my daughter's relationship with the Lord and some of her, you know, some of the things she's having a breakthrough on, some of the things she's having questions on. And so as tw at 12 years old, you know, just kind of like, how do I keep seeding? How do I keep saying different things? You know, I, I realize every conversation is seed into oh. her heart. Mm -hmm. Every conversation. And I understand that God, the provider, is also going to rain on the seed of the word that I sow into my children. Awesome. It's going to rain on the seed you sowed into maybe family members or friends or loved ones 
that you have been sowing the word into, you've been sowing prayer into. Can I tell you to God, God as the provision is going to rain on those things. As you stay in just this attitude of, of thankfulness and this attitude of knowing who he is as the provider, then you can know that all your seed, whether financial seed, time seeds, energy seeds, investment seeds into people and individuals, you say, Lord, I'm stepping out in my life, my whole life, I'm using it as seed to you. Mm. Knowing that whatever I give to you, Lord, whatever is done in obedience, whatever is done in, uh, in according with the word of God, Lord, that is seed, seed of your word that I am releasing into this world. And Lord, I am believing that you are bringing rain to it, mm -hmm. that you are going to bring a provision and a glory to it for all those areas. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, there is so many more things that I would love to share uh, on, on with you guys, but I want to give time for the question and answers because that is just something we just really enjoy doing uh, with you. So I am going to uh, toss it back to okay. Ms. Erin here, and we're going to try to make sure to do as many questions as possible in this time. Thank you. This was such a blessing. Mm. I love this teaching, and it, we have a lot of great questions, so please keep sending them in. Um, so I'm going to start with William on YouTube. I believe that I know the answer to this question. But I'm going to let you answer it. Is there a book Carrie would recommend that teaches the names of God with the definitions you use today? So I've done just different study and research. You know, mm -hmm. so there's lots of different things. Um, I do know. Um, uh, we're getting ready on lifefoundations.net. Okay. And so that is one thing. So that's my show. I'm getting ready to do uh, a season. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, this is a little teaser for it. But I have actually a product that I have that's the whole dynamic of it. It's a scriptural devotional that's got all the names of God in it. And then I have in it a ton of promises that are attached. Mm. So every single name's got all these promises. And so I'm actually right now finishing up um, writing that and we're gonna get it to the publisher. And so I would say tune, William. Um, I'm gonna make that resource mm -hmm. available. But um, if you check out lifefoundations.net, it'll also start showing that. So that's something. And then honestly, when you go in and study um, different resources, different biblical resources, um, they have a lot of things that we'll talk about the names of God. So I unfortunately don't have a one specific book. Okay. That's mm -hmm. why I decided to write one for you guys. Amen. So it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you, and this is passionate on your guys' heart because they teach this like the first year of Bible school yep. and I, maybe it's not life foundations, but you guys are just always talking about yes. the names of God. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It, so yeah, our life foundations book we do, we go into some, some, we don't go into all of them, but that is one of the key books that we also share. So you can, you can call the helpline and the prayer ministry and they'll get that to mm. you. And it's, it's, yes. it's powerful because it talks about not only just the, the names and the nature of God, but again, his love for us and who you are, spirit, soul, and body, like all of those dynamics become really important to understanding the attributes of who he is and then who he is within you. Mm. So. Oh, it's so good. Praise God. Amen. And then we have a question. Um, there's no name, but it says, how do we balance the difference between fighting with our source for provision, um, for example, like the government, mm -hmm. and then trusting God to bring about what's needed? Yeah. Well, I think that there's different ways that God does bring provision. So there can be provision from our job. There can be provision from say like the VA or the government. Mm -hmm. So you might be on a, you might have a pension, you might be on social security, you know, different, different nations that are watching. You might have different, you know, systems within the government that, you know, you get, you know, refunds or rebates or, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Those are also ways that God can provide where just our trust is not in them. I think that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Because if we're just saying, oh, I can't wait till my check comes. If my check doesn't come, I don't know what I'm going to do. No, that's not supposed to be our source. It can be an avenue of how God provides, but it's not the source. We keep looking to the Lord, right? Because I believe that God wants to have you live bigger than just off a VA check. He wants to have you live bigger just on than a subsidy of something or a, a, maybe a check of inheritance that comes in every month, right? Which obviously we would all love. You know, you've got to get to a place where you're going to say, you know what? If all those checks stopped, my heart's not going to be anxious because I believe God is my source. You don't despise the way that he does it, but you don't put your trust in them. And I think that's the key. Because I've, you know, we've, I've, I've had people pray. It's like, Lord, I thank you that you're going to bless me with refunds and rebates and inheritances, you know, and checks that came back. I mean, honestly, we had, we paid a 
taxes, you know, um, th this last year. And because um, we had sold some property and different yeah. things like that. So we're like, oh my gosh, this huge chunk of tax taxes. And you just feel like yeah. frustrated that you have to pay that much. And then all of a sudden we got this big check back from the government. And I was like, why? And Mike's like, I'm not asking why. I'm just thank you, Jesus, <laughs> you know, Jesus. thank you, Jesus, you know. And it was just <laughs> like, so I'm not looking to the government going, when am I going to get the next check from them? Oh, the government. No, no. Yeah. Um, I, but I also know that God, that was one of the ways that God was providing. And it was just like every time we were seeding, like all these checks keep coming in, like a rebate here and a refund here. And I paid too much for this, even though they sent me the bill, broke it down. The, they say, oh, well, we, we made a mistake. We owe you $900. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to yeah. see that as, as different ways that God is, is reigning on my giving over here as well as how I paid my bills. And so I think it's just, just make sure that your source is not in those things, but you don't have to despise those and say, well, because it's from the government or because it's from my uncle or because it's from, you know, mm -hmm. it's ungodly. Now, if God tells you to stop doing those things, then you just be in obedience because again, you know, he's your provider. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Great question. Um, I'm sorry if I mispronounced this name. Goitz on Facebook has a question about tithing. Mm -hmm. So how do we tithe? And specifically, is it from the net or gross income? Mike is probably better at this in defining net and gross. I'm always confusing them. <laughs> hand it over to you. <laughs> nice. Thanks a lot. So <laughs> you've got this. Man, I give I give off, you know, the top. I mean, yeah. I give off like it's right. all here. I don't be like, okay, well, yeah. you know, this is this is what I have to pay bills on and then whatever's left over, then I pay my tithes on. I pay uh, tithes on it all. Because again, it's whether it's $15 or it's like $25, does it make a difference? Mm -hmm. You know, and some people say, well, when you get into higher incomes, you know, that's like, it could be tens of thousands of dollars. Well, it's tens of thousands of dollars that still belong to the Lord anyway. Yeah. So whether net or gross, I think the thing you have to define is does the, all, mm -hmm. all of your finances belong to the Lord? And so we give off absolutely the whole of everything that we make and we just tie that to the Lord. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah. And I'm sure there's plenty of teachings out there on yes. tithing. Yes. Like financial stewardship. Yes. Andrews so or... Andrew's financial stewardship, okay. you know, on gospeltruth.tv, we also have Billy Epperhart on Saturdays oh, yeah. where he does a lot of the wealth builders and stuff as far as not just, you know, the, the practical things, but the, the spiritual things mm -hmm. and how those work with the word of God. So I would check out those two things as well. Awesome. Praise God. Okay, good. So Vanessa on YouTube has a great question. I daily confess God's promises, but never see the provision for years. What does it mean to trust God? For instance, don't care and don't pay bills. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if we, if we don't pay bills, then there's the, there's the earthly consequence mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, getting kicked out or car getting taken away True. or the, the lights being shut off. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying you don't shut your bills. So what I would say, you know, when somebody says, well, I've been confessing God's promises for years mm -hmm. and I haven't seen them. And so there's, again, there's a lot of teaching on financial stewardship. So the act of faith and the act of stewardship. So there's this not only being a hearer of the word, but being a doer of the word. Mm -hmm. And so this is where I would go back, Vanessa. And so this is a much bigger question because, you know, without knowing you and how you're confessing, Scene, right? Because so much of, again, how we confess the word, it's not out of this begging. Oh God, please, oh please. It's like, this is exactly why I wanted to bring about the nature and character of God. When you're just trust is like, Lord, I know who you are. Lord, I thank you. And it's not out of like begging, but it's out of thankfulness. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, give your prayers and supplications, God, with thanksgiving. So it's this joyful understanding that it's already yours. You're not trying to get it. That's why when Andrew's book, you've already got it. It has some, some really foundational principles, not necessarily about, about finances, but how do you and I come to a place of when we see promises and we see the word of God, how do we have this attitude of then promise and declaration and faith? And so what I would say, Vanessa, and for anyone else that has been saying, well, I've been doing it and it's not been working. Well, then this is where you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. He wants to lead you in, and guide you into truth and understanding. Because sometimes the way that we're trying to do things is out of a religious mentality. If I pray enough, if I confess enough, if I do enough, and then, okay, God, why isn't it? Because you've made it about you versus about thanking him for what he has done. And so, Vanessa, I would just say, you know, this, this word of God, don't do it from how you are confessing it. Do it from a place of thanking God. 
thanking God and said, Lord, reveal to me who you are and so that my trust is in you. And these promises now become what? Authority over your situation. Not just random scriptures. We just confess enough, confess enough, trying to show God, look, I believe enough. No, that's not, that's not how it works. It's yes, you and I can confess the word and yes, we can believe the promises of God, but it's from a place of thanksgiving, understanding mm -hmm. that it's ours, this faith, this confidence, that it's who he is that has already done it. So Vanessa, I would encourage you that that book on You've Already Got It, I think would be a tremendous blessing to you specifically, not only with finances, but for all the promises that you're standing on today. Absolutely. Amen. Praise God. That's awesome. And then Skylar on YouTube says, I want to grow in my obedience to God's call in my life. How can I grow in my obedience to God? I don't doubt that God gives me a vision, but at times I struggle being obedient to him. Mm. So this is good. So I know that we had talked about vision. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the, the struggle with obedience, you know, people will say like, why do I struggle with obedience? Well, at that point, what I've seen, um, what I've personally experienced, right, mm -hmm. is that when we have a lack of obedience, it's because there's this reliance on ourself. Mm -hmm. There's this reliance that like, I know better. I know what God's going to say. I know it's this whole dynamic of, you know, your self-reliance. And so how and when you want to know all the details of everything. You want to know when God's going to do it, how he's going to do it before you take a step. Mm -hmm. And so, so many times obedience is stepping into the unknown without all the details. And especially for people who are very analytical, very controlling. And when I say controlling, I mean, they just, they have that order, precision, dynamics, you know, it's all, you know, it's very hard to step out in obedience because you want to know all the facts and details. But again, that's why you get to a place of trust relationship with God, intimate relationship with God, because you know, if God said it, then you know, he's got all the details way better worked out than you and all your organizational giftings and administrative calling. You know that God can do it. And so, this is where I find that a lot of people that have that self-reliance, like I got to know all the details before I step out. Or they'll get to a place where I just don't trust the Lord. You know, I, did, I don't know if he's truly, if, did, is he truly going to do it? You know, this is where um, I've just found that, or, you know, not only is God truly going to do it, they are like, what if I misunderstood God? Mm -hmm. And so this is where I found these two dynamics come together, that I can be like, Lord, I believe I heard you. And I believe it's you, so I'm gonna step out in faith. And if it's not you, if it was just me, if I just like made it up because of, you know, pizza and a, you know, bad Coke, <laughs> if I just made it up, well, then you're good enough in your love to steer me That's so and correct me. Mm -hmm. And, and then Lord, if, if I, if I got all the ways you're supposed to do this, this is where, you know, someone says, well, God didn't do it. Well, you gave God an agenda list to follow. And God's like, I don't follow your agenda. Wow. I don't mm -hmm. follow your list in this thing. Let me do it. And so, um, this is where I would say for those that are struggling with obedience, I have found that obedience is not necessarily about trust. Mm -hmm. It is, but that's not the root of it. Disobedience is about a lack of understanding how much God loves you. Mm -hmm. Because if you know how much God loves you, that he only is going to call you to good, never to evil, always to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope, Jeremiah 29, 11. If you know that, if you're like, God, I know if you're only going to send me to the best places, people are like, if I like God, he's going to send me to Africa and you're going to love it. I'll tell you, because you don't even know you're going to love it because God knows you better than you know yeah. yourself. God knows your situations. And so when we know that God loves us, then we can say, Lord, if you're saying to do this, then I trust you. And then obedience is always a fruit of trust and love. And so that's what I would say, just get a revelation of God's love. Life Foundations book also has it. And then on my um, lifefoundations.net, um, on the gospeltruth.tv channel, I also have a whole series on God's love for you that we really start talking about love of God and trust and what it leads to. So I would encourage you to check that out. Hey Amen. It all goes back to God's love. You guys it have really seen does. so much breakthrough in so many people's lives because they teach on the love of God yep. everywhere you go. Yep. Yep. Amen. It's awesome. That's so cool. I think we have time for one more. Okay. Okay. Bryant on YouTube says, because you talked about sowing seeds, right? Mm -hmm. So he wants to know, can I sow a seed for an unbelieving family member to be born again? If so, what verse in the Bible can I stand on? Yeah. 
You know, and this is where I found, you know, uh, and there there is definitely seed that you can sow towards mm -hmm. something, absolutely, and have that faith towards it. Right. One of the things is that what I always I always have the balance of this is like you're not paying for their salvation. Like God, you know, like right. like how much is it worth? Well, it's worth like five hundred. Well, really, that's all their salvation. Like it should get up in the like double digits, triple digits, you know, some more zeros. No, we're not, we're not giving seed in the sense that we're trying to buy someone's salvation. We're not trying to buy someone's healing. We're not trying, but we're saying, Lord, I trust in you. And this is, this is a demonstration. This is a demonstration that I believe I am seeding into. I'm seeding into this evangelist as they're going out and, and bringing people into the kingdom of God. I just thank you, Lord, that this is seed into your kingdom. And I just believe a return is going to be the for the salvation of my loved ones as well. Now, does this mean that you just sow a seed, drop it in the basket and never speak the gospel again right. to that loved one? No. There's still ways that God's reign, God's provision is going to come. He's going to send other people into their path to speak truth. He's going to lead you and guide you to say the right thing at the right time. He's going to bring back to remembrance to that person. I mean, there's just all these other ways that God wants to do it. So you just be really careful that when we talk about seeding, right? Mm -hmm. We're not seeding like, well, I'll give my time and God, I'm only going to give you my seed because I'm expecting this. So we want to be careful with that so it, it doesn't become like this manipulation. Right. Or we can't manipulate Almighty God. I mean, He's too big to manipulate, but right. we have manipulation in our heart. And because of that, then there's really not the faith on that word. Mm -hmm. So yes, absolutely sow seed, believe God. But the thing is, don't also, in sowing that seed, don't stop ministry. Don't stop praying. Don't stop being led by the Holy Spirit of your interaction, not only a seed sown, but the interaction you have with that non-believer. That's so good. And that loved one, so. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. Amen. This was fun. Well, thank you guys for letting me <laughs> minister to you. And I am excited. So there's just so, there's so much word. You know, awmi.net, uh, gospeltruth.tv. Guys, we have so much teaching for you. So I know that you have different situations, scenarios, questions in your life. The word has the answer for you today for every single one of them. So I just speak God's provision over you. God's provision will be seen. Yeah. Why? Because it is who he is. It's his heart towards you today. So every problem, every bill, every scenario, every situation that you've been stressful about today, we just speak the peace of God mm -hmm. and that you would choose to see who he really is and that you can be thankful for all the promises that stem from who he is and how they belong to you today. So praise God, let us know how God is providing. And again, if you would like us to pray for you, call the prayer line. We would love to pray with you today. So God bless you. Thank you so much, Erin. Well, thank you, Carrie. This was so fun. Thank you guys. And we're gonna be back again on Monday. All right, God All right. bless you. Have a Bye, good weekend. everybody. <laughs> Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 